What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. It's the Earthmaster back here on this Monday, January 30th, 2023. It's about 11.40 a.m. here along the West Coast. And it uh, looks like we got some activity kicking up around Yellowstone. Noticing that uh, signature there on the Yellowstone Seismograph Station. Uh, let's go ahead and see what's going on. Let me check this out real quick here. Nothing showing up across the Earthquake 3D globe. And by the way, the latest quake, a 4.3 into the area of Japan. All right, let's go ahead and check out activity here across the map. Stand by for just a second here. Um, definitely seeing a signature. Again, it's going to be this down here. Uh, well, distinct signature of an earthquake. Looks like, uh, if I had to guess, probably around a three range. Uh, for this area nothing showing up yet though across the yellowstone region um, sometimes it does take the usgs a little while to issue uh, an earthquake let me go over here to the uh, yellowstone thumbnails here this is the overview a graph so to speak of activity and of course this earthquake is just coming in i think i'm barely seeing a little glimpse of it or well that's not it because that looks a little doesn't look like an earthquake there. So we'll have to keep an eye on it, see uh, how this plays out. Now there is a little bit of activity here across the borehole region of Yellowstone, but I'm uncertain on if these are earthquakes or if these are just ice quakes. Uh, I think it got down to negative 30 up there in Wyoming um, last night and this morning. Uh, let's see what the weather is currently doing up here into the uh, Yellowstone area. A lot of times when these colder temperatures come in, you get some snow and ice build up out there on the seismograph stations. It can definitely play a part on the uh, outside environmental interference there around Yellowstone. So temperatures up there at West Yellowstone, negative 10. Slight wind, um, but definitely not as cold. And if you notice here over the last couple hours, things have kind of looked like they've dropped off. Uh, but then again, um, you know, an ice quake isn't going to be something like that. That's a, uh, a definite well-defined signature of an earthquake. We'll check back on that here in just a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, looking at the rest of the map here, uh, shows a little bit of activity over here around the northern end, uh, well north into the Andaman Sea area. Now, this is our watch zone, um, basically from about... Oh, northern India, up around Myanmar, down into about the northern end of the Java Trench. This area has been absent of earthquake activity for a little while. And we've been watching this zone here for uh, some potential movement. Right now we've got a 4.9 coming in, pretty deep, four, uh, 104 kilometers. Uh, so it looks as though things may be getting to uh, uh, get active on this area of the plate boundary. We'll watch that for some potential larger scale movement. Uh, there in Japan, of course, on the Earthquake 3D globe, we've seen a little bit of activity kicking up, uh, including a 4.3 coming in within the last few minutes here. Now, they did have a 4.4. This is the one that USGS is showing um, up here. I mean, and there we go, 4.4. Uh, but that one coming in late last night. So there is another one coming into the Earthquake 3D program. So we'll wait for the USGS to report it. The EMSC model is very quick at getting these earthquakes out, but sometimes they're not 100% accurate. So either way, they're putting the information out. Um, just off the coast of Taiwan down here, 5.1 from early this morning. And a look at the area around the Philippines. Still seeing some activity kicking up here. Um, looks like, uh, although it looks like the majority of this activity from yesterday Let's see what we got for the uh, map here. <clears throat> Quite a few threes and some twos. Remember, the USGS will not show international earthquakes unless they're above 4.0 on their map. So it looks like there may be nothing going on here across the area of the um, Malucca Sea and, um, and areas around Indonesia. But there's quite a bit. Quite a bit of threes and twos kicking off still in a swarm fashion uh, in that area. Now up north here, uh, around the Himalayas, north of the region, we did see a five-pointer coming in. I believe the USGS did report that as a 5.3. 5 5.7 coming in yesterday to the same region, but just up north a little bit. Uh, so things are starting to uh, 
seems like they definitely want to pick up here around this plate boundary. Again, most of the larger earthquakes tend to occur around major plate boundaries and of course this area, northern India, down south, uh, do harbor some large potential for earthquakes. Over here, uh, eastern Turkey, Iran border, this earthquake here from yesterday, 4.2 coming in. And the Mediterranean Sea region did have a uh, 4.3 yesterday. Uh, a glance here at the model, EMSC model, shows uh, still some continued activity in the 2 and 3 range today in the white colored circles. All right, uh, 4.5, just around the, um, well, let's see exactly where this is at. There it is. Just south of the Port Villa area, Vanuatu region. Uh, New, New Caledonia region, it looks like uh, that one coming in just about three hours ago. 10 kilometers deep. Most of this other activity here from yesterday, Kermadec Trench, Fiji Islands area. New Zealand was ramping up pretty nicely yesterday as well. I'm not seeing anything above 4.0 for this area today so far. And a look at the models show, well, the red color rings from yesterday. So nothing new popping up here around the New Zealand area currently. But I think we need to watch this zone right about here where we're seeing those five pointers east and then south along this plate boundary. Kind of pointing towards that area. Um, very firmly. All right, uh, Big Island of Hawaii. Nothing showing up yet on Yellowstone. I'm kind of curious because it's definitely uh, not an ice quake here. Crazy. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity this morning around Pahala. A couple twos and some ones today. Now, nothing major going on. No major changes at the volcanoes. Everything still as is in terms of the uh, volcanic hazard maps down here along the Big Island. Kilauea, of course, still in eruptive stage. Mauna Loa, not. So uh, we're just kind of watching it, see how it's uh, seeing how it's going to play out. All right, uh, up into the Lucian Trench area. Uh, mostly ones and some twos this morning so far. A little bit of activity over here on the uh, <coughs> Canada side. Of the border 4.5 coming in just about one o'clock this morning uh, into the southern Yukon territory nothing else popping up through Canada let's give a quick glance here at the earthquakes Canada map here and see uh, <clears throat> see what's being reported looks like another smaller quake here into the uh, BC range a little 2.1 aside from that uh, some older activity there from weeks past all right uh, now into the pacific northwest a little small earthquake around mount rainier and over here around the coast range oakville washington seen a uh, somewhat of a deeper quake here 42 kilometers deep <clears throat> now if you know uh, what's up here of course it's cascadia and down there at that level that uh, depth there 42 kilometers for that 1.2 that's associated with the cascadia subduction zone of course that the um Technically, the plate boundary sits over here off the coast. This is where the uh, built-up strain from the uh, Cascadia kind of accumulates, kind of creates these ridges, mountains, and actually elevates the land out here. <clears throat> and when that next nine-pointer kicks off, um, it's supposed to drop this land about six feet uh, and, of course, provide quite a bit of shaking and a tsunami. So things are... I don't know. I'd say they've definitely been fairly active here over the past couple months in terms of trimmer. Uh, but most of that activity has been here to the southern end of the Cascadia. <coughs> Excuse me. And historically, uh, there's been more activity on the southern end of the Cascadia uh, than there has been as a whole, far as the entire rupture of the Cascadia, where we get that 9.0, possibly 9.2 Um in the subduction zone level there's been segments uh, most of the time it's been active around the southern end of the cascadia with uh, at least an 8.7 uh, this just would be a partial uh, rupture of the cascadia that tends to happen more often than the bigger ones but of course the last big one uh, 1700 we just had the anniversary here a couple days ago 323 years in january pretty uh, big earthquake 
But uh, tremor activity and earthquake activity in Northern California has been pretty consistent here over the past week. 2.1 down there, about 19 kilometers deep. Now it's getting up there <clears throat> right about the area where the strain builds up. Got to remember the tremor occurs down at about 45 kilometers into the subduction zone. This is from last night, 167 epicenters of tremor. And we're going to, uh, I do want to bring up, we're just going to go tremor since the 1st of January to, well, to, to Sunday and uh, see what we have. Of course, we did have a little bit of activity up here north, but the majority of these 5,120 epicenters have been positioned down here in the Northern California. Notice the, the thickness, the dense number of um, epicenters here. Now that's the very extreme southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, you can kind of see this line here. And if you will, it, you can draw on the map here eastward right here on the screen. And of course, the further right you go underneath this land is the deeper areas of the Cascadia. And of course, you get the volcanic arc uh, and the volcanoes through the Cascades, Northern California. And um, it's it's been pretty active here in Northern Cal. Let me show you guys the last week. Oh, look at that. There's that earthquake up there in Montana. That was a, a 4.1 coming in. So that was a ways away from Yellowstone. Um See, see if that signature is still there. It looks like it's gone now. But uh, we did see that Yellowstone signature pop up pretty nicely. It looked like it was at Yellowstone, but uh, apparently it was a little bit larger quake and just outside the Yellowstone area. Um, five kilometers deep for 4.1. Looks like a few folks did report feeling that earthquake. Bozeman, Montana, some light shaking. Uh, this area, I'm trying to think of, this is that zone that's seen a little bit of activity last year. Of course, there is some fault systems up here, right? It looks like it's on the eastern side here of the Big Belt Mountains. And um, a couple different fault segments here. Immigrant Fault. And I'm sure there's many more not being listed. But yeah, that's 4.1 coming in to western Montana. Crazy. All right, now getting back here to the uh, Cascadia area. I want to show you guys the last 30 days of... Uh, uh, we better go all magnitudes here so we can look at what's going on in the big picture. Uh, we did see a little bit of activity here. Um, just offshore. Now these are very shallow earthquakes, which tells me that there's further strain up here along the Cascadia, but also notice, you know, clusters of quakes here around Eureka, Fortuna. Uh, a lot of these quakes are down there into the subduction level, 19, 25 kilometers or so. All this activity is just upstream prior to the trimmer. Again, the trimmer, um, there it is, the trimmer activity here more eastward, more right here on the map than, for example, the earthquakes, right? These earthquakes are all, all positioned left of the tremor activity. Now, what that tells me right there is strain builds up upstream. The further left you go here on the map, um, the more shallow you would get to the subduction zone that sits offshore of the Cascadia. So a lot of tremor, a lot of strain being built up, and we see that with the earthquake activity that we noted over the past 30 days here. So we we'll just keep an eye on it, right? I mean, the best thing we can do is be prepared. And uh, again, it's it's possible the Southern segment here, the way Trimmer's been acting recently uh, could be uh, could be coming up. And it wouldn't, you know, in 8.7, even a partial rupture there would be uh, extremely damaging. All right, uh, let's see. I'm kind of curious. I want to see what we got for historical data here across the Montana area. Uh, of course, Yellowstone, it gets some big earthquakes. It didn't blow. You know, just because it gets some big earthquakes on occasion doesn't mean that uh, that super volcano is getting ready to blow. We would see, I guarantee we would be seeing sixes and sevens on a daily basis there, um, along with a whole bunch of uplift on the GPS stations, but that's not happening. But up here where this 4.1 just struck, man, I'm not seeing uh, any historical data here. For as, um, far as earthquake activity goes, of course, this is going to be 4.5 and above, and this one's just, just below the, just below that, uh, with a 4.1. Either way, things shaking a little bit there in Montana. Crazy. 
Alrighty, uh, let's get back here to the California area. The Bay Area looks about the same as it did yesterday. A little bit of activity down south here, just on the North American side of the plate boundary. Uh, that's going to be the southern branch here of the San Andreas Fault. I tend to watch areas of swarming um, on, oh, for, for example, it could be either side, but I think mostly we would want to watch areas on the North American side of the plate boundary for any swarming. This activity, this little bit of swarming here, looks like uh, at a 2.2 yesterday and a couple other smaller quakes and one within the last hour, a little 0.7. It's within probably about three miles here of the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. But, um, you know, if this unless it kicks up, I'm not going to get too worried about it. But, again, these little swarms could give a good indicator of uh, what's going on along a major plate boundary. A little bit swarming off on the San Jacinto Fault Zone as well. This is very typical. It is a... Uh, a pretty large fault system that runs parallel with the San Andreas Fault, but on the um, <clears throat> on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas area. So you guys got some crazy weather, some some sleet, and a whole bunch of ice building up out there around the Dallas Fort Worth area, along with some lightning. Got these cold temperatures, and what's that going to be? Thunder uh, thunder sleet. Some twos out there, western Texas. Uh, rest of the country looks pretty quiet there. And uh, Caribbean plate has really tapered off here today. Uh, only got uh, four earthquakes around the Puerto Rico area. Majority of that from yesterday, so things are awfully quiet there for now. There's that 4.1, just an odd earthquake. But again, um, eastern side of the rocky mountains that kind of sit you can see them go all the way up into canada canada obviously it looks like it's within that range now i know we did see a little bit further activity up here um in canada see they're not showing that i wonder why let's see which one's that one 3.9 4.0 maybe it's this one right here that i was thinking about a couple days ago but uh, that's, that's actually rather interesting. All right, so I think that's about it for now here, folks. Um, we'll definitely watch some certain regions here along, along with this area into interior North American plate. That is right up against the uh, North American craton here. Of course, the Rocky Mountains deformed land here to the west of that craton. It kind of extends down here. Um, you can pretty much draw a line right down here and up north. Uh, we can tend to cover that quite a bit here on this channel. But, uh, yeah, it seems like it's right up against that uh, area. And uh, let me give a quick glance here at the Yellowstone overviews once again here and see if we can find that uh, earthquake once again. Oh, there it is. So it was actually that uh, signature down here. Oh goodness, it never fails. <laughs> never fails. Uh, there's the start of that signature and that uh, 4.1 showing up in Yellowstone, but up in Montana. All right, Let's see what else we got here for space weather real quick and then we'll get off here. 80% chance for a C flare, M flare at 15%, uh, X flare at 1%. Again, these sunspots are not looking all that uh, active. The sunspot regions that are facing the Earth are very disorganized. And, um, yeah, they just don't have a whole lot of power or potential with them. Uh, getting a little bit better look here at this new side sunspot coming around the southeastern limb. But that, it's hard to tell right now, but it doesn't look all that impressive either. Three-day forecast looks green. Uh, and there's uh, not a whole lot of potential to see any greenery up in the sky in the higher latitudes. Things look uh, fairly minimal for the aurora forecast for now. All right, folks, have yourself a good night or good day. And I'm uh, going to get started back on some schoolwork here. We'll catch you guys back here later tonight. Have a good one.